Maintaining a bike's chain is something which is quite controversial with bike tech lovers out there because, well, let's face it, there are plenty of different ways of doing so. The chain obviously is an ultra important part of your bicycle because it allows you to transfer the power from your legs through to the back wheel so you can go forward. What we're gonna look at today though is why you would need to replace it and importantly, how to replace it. Why does your chain actually need replacing then? Well, with every bit of pressure that you're putting through the pedals, the lifespan of the chain is decreasing. Now, there's a common misconception out there that chains actually stretch, which is not strictly true unless you're putting out an incredible amount of watts through the pedals, because let's face it, those links and rivets and pins, they're not gonna be easy to stretch, are they? Well, certainly not with my legs. Uh, but how does the chain wear? Well, as it's moving around the cassette and the chain rings, with little bits of dirt getting involved inside of the rivets and the rollers, essentially they're acting like a cutting paste and they are beginning to wear away. Hence the thought that it could be stretch, when in actual fact, some parts are just getting a little bit smaller. Hence the love for a clean chain, because clean chain means it's gonna last a bit longer. Now a chain that has excessive wear is not gonna give you good gear shifting and that is an essential part of bike riding as we all know. So why is it not gonna do that? Well, the chain that's worn isn't gonna sit perfectly on your cassette sprockets as well as your chain rings. And in turn, it's actually gonna wear out those components a lot faster than normal because you're trying to get two things to work together that aren't ideally suited. So that's gonna give you more repairs to do and also it's gonna cost you more money along the line. Now there are a few different methods for you to actually use to check whether or not your chain needs replacing. And the first one is probably the simplest and arguably the cheapest because it's not gonna cost you anything. But there is a downside, it's not deadly accurate. But how are we gonna do it? Well, first of all, put your chain in the biggest chain ring at the front and then on the rear, put it on the sprocket with the least number of teeth. So in my case, it's in 52 and 11 at the rear. And then move around to the three o'clock position on the chain ring and pull away the chain from the teeth. Now, if you can see daylight through the teeth like that, but it's across three or four teeth, then in my opinion, it definitely needs replacing. Now, another method of measuring chain wear is using something like this, a handy little chain checker from Park Tool, where you essentially put these two pins in between a length of chain, and then with this little gauge, it actually lets you know whether or not your chain needs replacing. Choosing your chain, it's a pretty straightforward affair, or at least the first bit is. Uh, so how do you do it exactly? First of all, count the number of sprockets on your rear cassette. So in my case, there's 11, so I need an 11 speed chain. Now the next bit isn't necessarily that straightforward, but a general rule of thumb is that the more money you spend, the lighter the chain is going to be, because you're gonna have slotted pins which join the chain together, as well as slotted links which are part of the chain. So in turn, you are gonna save some weight. The choice of that though is generally up to you. How long should your chain be then? Well, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be replacing like for like, so you're gonna have the same number of chain links. It's only when you start putting things into the mix such as crazy big chain rings or even a tandem where you start to have to think more and more about the number of chain links involved. But luckily, we aren't going there today. So how are we gonna remove that chain then? Well, in most cases, you're probably gonna need something like this, which is a chain tool, which is very specific for the actual job. But before you rush out and buy one, have a look at your chain and make sure you don't have a master link, which you can see right now. So a master link, well, you're gonna need something different for those. Now, some people, they can remove them by hand by sliding them against each other, working the two sides in opposite directions. But it's more than likely as well that you are going to need some of these a pair of master link pliers because that makes the job much easier to remove as well as in most cases install too. So you're gonna use a chain tool, are you? Well, let's talk about it anyway because it's quite unique, isn't it? You certainly don't see tools like this. How does it work though? Well, you can see here there's a pin which moves in as you turn the handle. And then with the chain in this slot here, you can actually remove the joining pins or rivets from the bushes and rollers of your chain, allowing you to split it. And then the same tool actually allows you to rejoin a chain with those rivets and pins. Cool, isn't it? 
How do we know then how much chain to fit to your bike? Well, in most cases, you will be doing like for like. So the simplest method is to grab your old chain and then your new chain and line up the links perfectly with one another so that all of the rivets are matching. And then when you find the end of the old chain, that's where the end of your new chain needs to be. Now, the other tried and tested method is with your bike chainless, like so, put the rear derailleur into position for the lowest sprocket. So when I say lowest, I mean the one with the most number of teeth. So in my case, a 28. And then put the front derailleur in position for the big chain ring. So just hovering over there. And then you're gonna to need to gradually feed your new chain through the rear derailleur cage just be aware that obviously there are little tabs in there which keep the chain running in its right place. And then, once it's worked its way through, actually slot that chain onto the cassette, bring it forward onto your chain ring, like so, and then pull the chain towards each other. Now, as you can see, this chain is pretty much spot on already because once I join that, I will be adding a little link in. I am gonna take out a link though, because it does need to be just a tad shorter. Um, what you don't want though, is for the angle of the rear derailleur to be like that, because if it's too short, you aren't gonna get good shifting. And in the worst case, you do find yourself in that gear and the chain is really short. Believe me, that can actually lock up and you can't carry on pedaling or certainly can't change gear just because of all the tension through the chain. So on the flip side, if the chain was too long, well, if we joined it how it came, it would be looking like that, which is not ideal, is it? So you would really want the chain to be something like this. So you could in fact measure a chain like that, but the best way of doing it certainly is to do it with the chain on the big chain ring and the big sprocket at the rear. So most chains, they either come with a joining pin or rivet, or a master link. So first up, the master link. If that's what you've got, you want both ends of the chain that you join to look like this. So it's the uh, internal bits of the chain. Whereas if you're using a pin to join them, you're gonna have one internal and one external. So just be really aware of that before you attempt joining them. Now here's a little tip for you before you rejoin that chain, because sometimes there can be quite a bit of tension from both the chain being fitted onto the chain ring as well as the spring in the rear derailleur. So hang the chain down like so, and then you can simply join it with that master link or the actual fresh new pin without the added stress of trying to wrestle against the tension of the chain. Now, if you do have a master link, I suggest you add in one section at a time. So one side into each hole, and then you just slide them in against each other. Job done. So the other method is using one of these, especially for a Shimano chain. This is a connecting pin. As you can see, it has a blunt end and a slightly pointy end. So with your two bits of chain, so one end and the other end, put the internal width into the external and then just put in, first of all, the pointier end into the link of chain. Then we're gonna need our chain tool to actually push the connecting pin further in. So with the pin now in place, you want to slot it inside your chain tool and then slowly wind in the handle so you start to feel some resistance. And then gently, just turn by turn, a very small amount like so, because these links, well, they're not cheap, are they? Let's face it. Slowly push that pin into place. They go in pretty easily, as you can see. The last bit, you are gonna have a little bit of resistance, so you can check just on the top of the chain tool there to make sure that the pointy bit, because you can see there's a little bit of a join between the pointy bit and the actual link itself. So just make sure that the uh, slight little join has actually popped through the other side of the chain. So with this pointy little connecting pin, what we're gonna do is snap it. That's right, snap it. The first time I ever did this, I was a little bit concerned, thinking I've broken it, but it's designed to be broken, so let's do it. Grab yourself some pliers, grab hold of it, and then just work against it. And sometimes it does take a couple of different attempts. And as you can see, there it is, it's snapped off. 
Now on the inside of that chain link, you want to make sure that that connecting pin that we've just installed does pop out slightly. So in my case, it does need to just go out a fraction. It's so, so small. Don't get carried away. Instead, reinsert the chain inside your chain tool and then gradually, and it only requires just the tiniest of amounts, just push it through a tiny little bit. Now, if you have got yourself a stiff link, so when it's a little bit, not quite as smooth as the rest, grab the chain on each side and then simply flex it from side to side and that will free it up so it's as smooth as the rest. Now, as ever, like and share this video with your friends. And if you have subscribed to the Global Cycling Network, well done. If you've not, then you're very naughty. But in all seriousness, make sure you do subscribe and also click that bell notification. That way, you'll get alerted each and every time we post one of our great videos. Don't forget as well to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com where we have a whole heap of goodies for you to check out. And now for two more great videos, how about clicking down here and down here.